Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2006, it's a Ford Expedition. The problem we have is that the, the vehicle doesn't start. Uh, the customer tells me that they, uh, they turned the key and got absolutely nothing. They tried to jump start it with their, uh, with their other vehicle and, and nothing. So we had to tow it down, we dropped it outside, we just pushed it into the shop and uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, diagnose what the problem is and to go about repairing it so we can get this vehicle out the door and back to the customer uh, as quickly as possible. So uh, let me show you what it's doing and how we're going to go about diagnosing it and repairing the problem. So uh, come on, let's take a walk over here and I'll show you what's happening, or well, what's in this case, what's not happening. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. First thing we're going to do is just hop in here, turn the key to the on position. We notice that there's no security lights or anything like that on on the dashboard, which is a good thing. And we're turning the key. And here we have absolutely nothing. All right. Now, if you look at the headlights on the wall up there, you see the headlights are on? Turn the key, nothing happens at all. You don't see them getting dimmer, they stay exactly the same. Which leads me to believe that the battery is gonna be good, but we're gonna go out there and we're gonna check it just to make sure anyway. So, all right, let's grab our equipment and uh, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test our battery. I pretty sure that the battery is going to be good, but we're going to go through everything to, uh, to walk it through it step by step. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to test the battery to make sure it's okay. Alright, this says the battery is good. It says recharge is 753 CCA, which is more than adequate to get this vehicle to, uh, to crank over, so we know that the battery is not the issue here. Right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, get our uh, trusty power probe, and we're going to go down by the starter, and we're going to check power and ground down by the starter. So we're going to connect our test light up or as Eric O would call it, the uh, scope on the rope. Okay, so we're going to connect this up and we'll lift the vehicle up and uh, we'll continue down the bottom. Okay, now looking at it from the bottom, this is actually your starter up here. I know it's a little dark and hard to see, but that's your starter right there. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a good ground on your starter. As you can see, the light is lighting up green. So we know we have a good ground. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna come over here. This is the thicker wire right here. This is your power lead. This is the one that actually brings the power into the uh, starter so that the starter can crank over and start the vehicle up. Um, so we wanna make sure we have power there, which we do. You can see it's lighting up red. We have power there. This smaller lead right over here, that smaller lead, I hope you can see it, I don't know if you're going to be able to, but that smaller lead right up there, that smaller lead right there is the one that actually comes from, the, from inside the car down to the, uh, to the starter to, uh, to get it to crank over. So what you would need is an assistant to hop up inside the vehicle and to crank on this wire, to crank up in the dashboard to make sure that it starts. So, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's give it a shot and let's see what's going to happen in here. I hope you can see that. All right, crank it. Okay. You see how it lights up red? Crank it. All right, you see how it's red? Now we know there's power going to this thing. This, this vehicle should start. We already checked to make sure there's power here, which there is and we have power here when we try to crank it. Crank it one more time. All right, you see? We have power here, which now this starter should be turning over. We have a ground right here already, so we should be cranking. So let me show you one thing you can do that sometimes you can get it to start, sometimes you can't. So let me grab a hammer 
and we'll come right back. Okay, let's give it a shot and see. Sometimes if you tap the starter, you can get it to crank over. Now, I just want to point this out. You got to be careful. Don't hit it too hard. You're just going to tap it very lightly. Tight squeeze up here. Let's try, it, let's try it that way. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Hear that? Maybe you can't. Okay, well it did start the crank, but then it stopped. But now here, listen. Here clicking. Well, it was anyway. Let's try one more time with the hammer. Okay. I can hear a slight click in the starter now and before I didn't. So uh, we're going to say that that starter's had it. And we're going to call it the paw store now, get a price on it. So, uh, all right, let's take a walk in the back and continue. Okay, so let me just recap exactly what's going on so you know. Uh, we have, we checked the ground on the starter to make sure we had ground on the starter, which we did do. You have two wires on the starter. You have your primary wire, which is your main feed bringing power to the starter, which we had power there. And the thinner wire, or your start wire, is the one that when you turn the key to the on position, that's the one that brings power down to the starter. When you bring power to that second little skinny wire, that start wire, the vehicle should crank over. And in this case, it's not took a hammer, tapped on it very lightly, it cranked about a half a revolution and stopped. Tells me something inside that starter burnt up, whether it's the, uh, the solenoid or the, uh, the, the actual windings inside failed or whatever, we don't know for sure. But uh, either way, we got to change it. We can't do anything else without it, so uh, let's make a phone call and get a price. Joseph, how you doing? It's Jim. Hey, uh, Joe, um, 2006 uh, Expedition 5.4. Can I get a price and availability on the starter, please? Okay. Okay, you stop it. Okay, I'm sure he's going to say to do it. Will you send it down, please? Hey, is the bookkeeper in? I want to square up my bill. Right, thank you. Don't go nowhere. I'm going to pay my bill and come right back. Okay, sorry about that. I always like to uh, I always like to pay my bill as soon as the uh, the postula hands me the bill. I pay it right away the uh, the, the, the next day. Uh, one thing I learned is that if you take care of your postula and you pay your bill, they'll do just about anything for you. If I have to send them. 20 miles away to pick up parts, they'll do it for me because I pay every time. Um, I didn't bother filming the, the conversation with the customer because his exact words were, why are you calling me? Fix it. Uh, he doesn't care what it costs. So, um, All right, so I ordered the starter and let's get out there and let's get this job done and get it out the door and hopefully uh, get the next vehicle in right after it. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm not sure how you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to try to do this the best I can. All right, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this cover off right here. It just pulls right off. And then we're going to disconnect those wires up there. The uh, smaller one is probably going to be a 10 millimeter. The larger one is probably going to be a 13 millimeter. Now you can get in here with the socket if you want. You can get in here with a wrench, whatever works for you. I will point this out to you. 
I did disconnect the battery up top. I took the negative battery cable off, so make sure you take off that cable. All right, so we're disconnecting that first lead right there. And we're gonna take that 10 millimeter bolt. Oh, I stand corrected. It looks like it's gonna be 11 millimeter. I'm wrong again, it's a 10 millimeter. All right, so we're gonna break that bolt loose. Once you break it loose, then you can use your open end wrench to take it out. Or if you're using a socket, whatever works for you. Hopefully you can see okay here. Okay. We just take these wires off and we'll just relocate them out of the way for now, temporarily. Again, make sure you have your battery disconnected. All right, then we're going to remove this cable right here and we'll take out those bolts. So uh, let's get in there. We're going to need a swivel and a, uh, a, a socket to get in to disconnect them. It's probably going to be a 13 millimeter, just so you know. So, starter comes out, just like this, and we'll grab the new starter and put it back in. So we'll come right back. Okay, now we got a replacement starter. We match it up to make sure it's the right one, of course. And we're going to lift our starter back in where it previously came out. And what I always do is catch the bottom bolts first. Stick my head in there. Okay, line it up just like that. And then I always catch the bottom bolts first, it's a little easier. Turn them in by hand. You're not going to tighten them tight. You're just going to snug them in there for now. Right, the key is you got to catch all three bolts before you tighten anything else up. Right, so we're just going to snug that bolt in a little bit tighter.
right? It's snug, but it's not tight. See? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to catch the other bolts. The other are two bolts. Okay, now that you have everything, everything is caught, we're going to return the, uh, the wires back up to where we previously took them out. Remember we tucked them away in here for safekeeping, right? We'll just take these over here. We're going to reattach our ground wire where it came off. Right there. We're going to screw that nut on the top. that ground wire. This is the ground for the starter now. Alright, our ground is nice and tight. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to reattach our positive lead and our start wire. Sorry about that noise out there. There's some riffraff in the neighborhood. I'm going to take that off. It's a little bit tight, so... Good. I always check them just to make sure. Now we'll put a wire on here. your nut as well as your washer off of there. Same thing on that start wire. Unscrew that. Take the nut and the washer off. And now we can put both of our, our cables back on the start wire. That and another wire over the top. Put our washer back on the lock washer. We attach that 10 millimeter nut. And we're going to put our lock washer on. And our 13 millimeter. Now. You want to be careful when you tighten up that uh, 13 millimeter that you don't snap it off by accident because it doesn't take much to break these off. Make sure your wires are in where they belong. There's a little clip that it pops into and then you can tighten up the wire. Like I said, you don't want to go too tight and break it. You're just going to snug it down. Notice I'm using a short wrench, so we're not going to have too much leverage on it. Then we'll tighten up our 10 millimeter bolt right here also. Now obviously you can get in there with a ratchet if you wanted to, but I chose to do it this way. Alright, so let's to recap. We have our ground wire put back on. Our three bolts are bolting the starter back in place and tight. We have our 13 millimeter power lead on, and we have our 10 millimeter start wire on. All right, let's lower the vehicle down. Let's uh, put our negative cable back on, and let's fire this up. All right.
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to reconnect our battery that we previously disconnected. And then we'll tighten that up. Okay. All right. Now we did our job correctly. We should be able to turn the key and get this thing fired up. All right, that's it. All right, another job out the door, on to the next one. It's a good feeling when you get in the, in, the, in the vehicle, turn the key and it fires right up just as we knew it would. All right, as always, thanks for watching. You have any questions or comments, you send me an email. I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.